awoke to find myself in a library, with no recollection of entrance or location. Nothing was out of sorts on my person. This didn't seem to be a dream. My mind itself was pristine and clear. My focus waned to a point so fine it could pierce. All of this existed without the slightest notion of who I was or what I was doing. My identity remained as anonymous as my novel whereabouts. I rose to a seated position on the floor and studied my environment. Around me were several wooden tables and padded chairs. Across the room was the couch I would have preferred to have woken from, carefully guarding a coffee table holding a recently extinguished candle. On opposing sides stood two armies of shelves, burly behemoths with literature composed like armor to defend their skeleton framework. If I exuded effort, I could make out a ceiling perhaps thousands of feet above me, countless row upon row of shelved material separating us. If libraries expanded with age, which in a way I suppose they do, I had clumsily stumbled into the most ancient of examples. The stagnant air smelled mildly sweet from the corpse of the candle, but it hung steadily with an eerie stillness. I could not detect the faintest disturbance of noise or motion, apart from what I had my hand in creating. I rose to my feet, careful to avoid affecting the heavy silence of whatever knowledge this place contained. I proceeded to the nearest shelf to survey the, fight, the titles it held. Perhaps through observance of the organizational paradigm I could elucidate my position. My intention was immediately dismantled, as I discovered that the books remained entirely unlabeled, and searching through them proved ineffective at best. Most seemed to be English, but garbled and spit onto the pages as if someone had nothing better to do than to make a mockery of the written word. I found nothing to be capable, perhaps even worthy, of being deciphered, and I resolved to wander the hallways until I could make more sense of things. Aisles butted from every angle and direction, as if I had stumbled into an architect's metaphor for a tree. It was easy and immediate to become disoriented, but I was headed somewhere, so I continued walking. Occasionally the shelves would break formation, and I would appear in an empty area of the nowhere in between their ranks. This would be useful, however. I could make out nothing but continued aisles on either side as far as I could see. There were no markers. There were no details I could pry apart that might help me to realize where I was. The colors around me were finite and warm, and if not for the pervasive loneliness of the walk, might have been quite relaxing. I wanted to call out for help. If someone existed relatively close, we could use sound to navigate and close the gap between us. Perhaps I wasn't alone in these complacently nightmarish halls. I had to remember that I knew nothing, and that any thoughts or ideas that arose were no more verifiable than others. I could believe what I wanted. Try as I might, I was incapable of breaking the silence. It seemed the most formidable taboo to project sound in any great volume. There were no written warnings. There were no rules to be found. What was causing me to feel this way? What seemed like hours traversed me? I had no gauge with which to monitor myself. 
I passed tome upon tome of unlabeled nonsense with no more discrepancy than in the air itself. This continued for some time, I assume, before the first breach of normalcy invaded. I stumbled upon a book in the middle of the row, laid haphazardly onto the floor by someone nearly as careless as the author. I'm coming, I'm coming, I heard a voice tell me, with hushed urgency. A man hobbled towards me from far ahead, unsteady from the weight of the featureless sack he carried, which bulged with the masses of what I assumed were books. He continued until he had reached the book I now held, which he took from me and placed into his sack. He caught his breath before turning to me and saying quietly, I was going as fast as I could to fix it. He gestured toward the sack. They never let you get away with leaving a mess. Reaching into his bag, he retrieved another, or the same, hard to tell really, book. He scanned the shelves, and I followed him down the aisle as he searched for the home of the work. Who is they? I asked him, and where are we? The keepers, my friend. You are in the greatest library ever to be wherever we happen to be. I'm not so sure it has a name. I just call it the Great Library. The keepers, who are they? Well, I should think they are the ones that built this place, but I can't be completely certain. There's one now. Passing the end of the hallway was what appeared to be a cloaked figure. It looked to be about eight or nine feet tall, and bore a mask with a few painted lines to simulate a face. If there was anything resembling the physical description of an apparition, or perhaps spirit, keepers held that title. The keeper moved slowly and beyond silently. Its motion seemed to remove the sound around it as it passed. It gave no attention to the two of us and vanished. I don't understand. How did I get here? Why are the books impossible to read? And consequently, how are you reading them? What is going on? I tried to disperse my impatience. I didn't want to scare off the only other being who may be able to help me. This was assuming that the keeper wouldn't. I wasn't entirely excited nor interested to communicate with such a foreboding figure. The man sighed. <sighs> I've never understood how they expect people to figure things out on their own. It certainly took me a while. He stopped and placed the book into the gap on the shelf, sliding it perfectly in place. Turning to me, he continued, You were here because you were chosen. I don't know why and I don't know how, but I'm aware that the keepers hand select their visitors. It's probably a great privilege. I've learned what I have through watching the keepers and exploring on my own. Most people leave before me, so... I have quite a respectable understanding of the goings-on here, as much as one could, I suppose. So people get out then? There was hope. How do we do that? Yes, it's rather simple if that's your goal. See, the keepers brought you here to give you a single opportunity to ask any question imaginable. They've spent who knows how long amassing all of this data you see around you, but it's written in their own language. The keepers are a very complicated, perhaps even advanced race. You can't read the words because you don't know what you're looking for. How do we choose what to ask them? I'm getting to that. There are interactive terminals within this library, quite nice ones actually. You get to one of those and search for a book containing whatever you're looking for. Most people just search for the one telling them how to leave. Escape is usually the word they use. If they make it out, why don't you do the same? I think that 
the keepers are choosing people they expect to ask profound questions. He scratched his chin. Sort of a test to see what people will ask. I've seen other creatures roam the halls here too, but usually I don't talk to them. I'm a bit frightened of beings with other forms. But, like I said, you only get a single question answered. I respect the keepers giving me this privilege, and I'm searching for answers without using a terminal until I decide on the best question to conjure up. Is that even possible? To avoid searching for things here? Possible? Yes. Likely? Not so much. There's a reason those terminals exist. I couldn't tell you how long I've been here, but I can tell you that I've seen hundreds, if not thousands, come and go. I'm trying to decipher the Keeper's language, and while at a humbling pace, I am making progress. He smiles at me. Could you take me to one of those terminals? I request. He nods. The walk is quiet, and it seems that my companion desires to disturb the peace as little as I do. I question him about it. The keepers work best in silence. Your omen is not without evidence, he says with a frown. If you are too disruptive, you will be removed. I become thankful toward my previous handicap to call out for company. I take it you don't know much about the keepers, then. They aren't a talkative bunch. I've tried communicating with them, but they never seem interested until I approach a terminal. So the keepers are testing a portion of the universe's inhabitants. For what? Possibly the obvious, to collect more data? If I remembered who I was, I could possibly gain greater insight into their candidate selection process. But it seemed my memory was removed for a reason. The keepers probably wanted their subjects to make as pure a choice as possible. I decided to question my companion to see if his identity is useful. What is your name? I ask. If I knew, I would tell you. No one knows who they are here, he confirms. Sometimes I wonder if the keepers even know who they themselves are. You've been here for an indefinite period of time, and none of your memories have returned. As you probably realize, time is meaningless here. I am less of myself now than I ever was. As I continue, I feel I am losing my chance at remembering who I am, but the pursuit of knowledge just may be worth it. You seem optimistic, given the circumstances. If there is any part of my identity I have learned, it is this. I am the symbol for hopefulness. He beamed at the revelation. What do you mean? While others seek escape, I alone remain confident in my ability to find what I'm looking for. I recognize that it may take time, but I see no problem with that. I've become numb to the happenings of time. I don't respond as I wonder the placement of the division between optimism and delusion. The walk finally opens into the largest vacuum from shelves I have seen this far. We exit the, we exit the clearing of shelves into an open space cluttered by tables and chairs, and about a dozen keepers in various positions and activities. They all turn to look at us, but we hear nothing, and their gazes do not return to their previous doings. In the center of the room stood a four-sided holographic screen, which I assumed was the terminal. It was about half my height, and emitted a soft blue glow. The keepers watched. This is the part I never get used to, my companion whispered. The presence of the keepers filtered his volume to near nothing. They watched so intently. It does not matter what they were doing before. If you approach that terminal, you become the most important person in the universe. 
I join his whispers. What happens when the people ask to leave? When you ask anything, you are given the location of the book with the answer. I went once with someone who sought escape. I could not read the book, and he just turned and walked away. He would not speak to me further, and I never saw him again. I become nervous. I am not yet ready. I tell the man, hoping to receive some guidance on what to do next. I understand, he consoles. It's a big decision. I'm sure you'll make the right one, though. Remember, while knowledge is beautiful and useful, it is also dangerous. Oh, and never give up hope. He smiles at his gems of wisdom. Quietly swinging his bag over his shoulders, the man turns and shuffles back the way we came. I am alone with the presence of countless prying eyes. More keepers seem to materialize from the aisles to watch me. Each mask held a different design, so I assumed that's how they contained identity. Determined not to make a decision so early, I very slowly make my way to a table and sit down. I watch the keepers slowly revert their gazes to their original tasks. They work in a deafening silence. Every move I make is still being watched, and if I move in large motions, they all turn to watch me until they become certain that I'm not ready to make a decision. I decide that I should probably consider my options. Escape is the obvious choice, as I do not wish to remain here any longer than I must. Then again, with no memory of an alternate life, I have no guarantee of returning to a pleasing existence. Here is comfortable, despite the oddities and that isn't a guarantee for any other life I may have lived before and once again. I could ask what my life is, or was, rather, but then I would have no way of returning to it if I desired to, apart from beginning down the path of the man I encountered. I wondered if I would ever see him again. I briefly considered standing and fleeing back towards him to gain more understanding about his experiences in this library. I felt such abrupt countenance might alarm the keepers, and I restrained myself. I didn't care to see what they were capable of doing to those who deserved their solemnity. I could ask about the keepers themselves, or the construction of this library. Perhaps in learning about the library itself, I could discover where I might find an exit, or through the secrets of the keepers reveal a purpose and authority that could prove useful. These things were not guaranteed, however, and I resolved not to take chances on what I could not know. Despite all of the potential options, there was one question I could not shake. If it was a pure desire for knowledge that the keepers wanted to see, then mine was genuine. I decided on a final attempt to regain my memory. I would ask my identity. Once I remembered, I would know where I stood in regards to wanting to return or not. I could become used to this place if it became the better option. And perhaps after countless time of working, I'd discover a purpose I might not achieve any other way. I stood, and all heads greeted me with worthless gazes. I shivered. It may be a while before I became used to the keepers. I approached the terminal, and the keepers approached me. Not all of them, but... Many circled the terminal near me, keeping reasonable distance, as if I might infect them with my noises. The screen lit up, and upon proximity expanded a floating keyboard, and a query reading search on the screen. It seemed I was controlling the keepers. Everything that I did elicited a reaction from them, silent but real nonetheless. With gentle motions, I typed the question, Who am I, and what is my name? 
I pressed the search button, and my query vanished. Immediately, the screen gently glowed as a single keeper stood forward. It glanced at the screen and began walking away from it. I was convinced to follow it, either by some pseudo-telepathy or simply the lack of desire to remain there, and I trailed behind him. As we entered the aisle, the surrounding keepers returned to their business, satisfied with the question of another being. We walked for quite a while, I imagine. The keeper said nothing to me. A few times I whispered to it to ask it of the library and its purpose, but it made no recognition or attempt to answer. Finally, the keeper stopped, and facing the bookshelf to our left, began to ascend. It silently floated to the seventh shelf up and removed a single volume. The books next to it quietly shifted to adjust to the new absence of space. The keeper slowly floated downward and handed me the book, remaining to watch me read it. The keeper passed his hand over the cover of the book, and several letters appeared, shimmering. It was my question. Who am I, and what is my name? I open the book to the first page, and watch as the letters fade and rearrange. A disconcerting aura of mind emerges, as the only remaining sentence becomes, You have no name. What? I don't understand. What does that mean? I say, forgetting to whisper. The keeper flinches subtly and radiates disapproval at my tone. It reaches forward gently and turns the page. A similar event happens, but more letters remain. You are a manifestation of a mind. You do not exist in a physical you have no name. You are at the mercy of those who perceive you. Whatever they choose to make of you, you will become. That was the last I got from the book. I do not know how long it has been. I have no way out. I have approached the terminal again, but it no longer responds to me. The keepers ignore me. I have met with other people who have arrived here, but none of them have been able to help me, and they all leave. Those with alien forms I cannot communicate with. I have never seen my original friend again, but I know he is still here because I can feel him. I am learning the language of the library slowly, but it is happening. It is torture. The saving grace is that I have learned to talk to you, listener. Yes, you. The one listening to these words. I am communicating directly with you now. I need you to end me. Eternity is probably meaningless to you because you are a real human. You will live, and you will die. Existence is fleeting for you, and you have no reason to worry, because you will cease to exist at some point, and perhaps become something else. Something new. I do not get that luxury. I have wanted to dispose of my life, but I can find nothing within these walls to do it with, and I have never discovered an exit. During an attempt, I once began screaming and causing commotion in hopes that the keepers would dispose of me, but I had no such luck. Contrary to my initial warning, when noise was presented around the keepers, they would flee from it. It seemed they were afraid of me. After discovering this, I have found no other hope. So please, reader, I beg of you. You may not attribute existence to me, but I exist in a form you cannot perceive beyond these words. I need you to forget me, remove me from your memory. 
I never existed. You never heard of me, and you never will again, because once I have vanished from all minds, I will be forever distilled, purged from existence, finally at peace. I have no name, and I am cursed to live forever unless you completely erase me. I do not want to remain. I live and breathe and roam these walls just as you see it in your head, but I cannot last much longer before my sanity drains from me. Listener, you are my last chance at death. Grant me my one wish and forget me. Goodbye. I leave to better my chances. May you and yours die someday, as I wish I could. I could.